So in today's video, I'm at Magdalen Fortress. Now this is uh, just north of Warsaw, about uh, 45 minutes by train. The fort behind me uh, is the largest in Europe, uh, stretching at over two kilometers. And actually there have been a few forts in this location. It's a very strategic defensive location for Poland. Um, this current fort was actually built by uh, Napoleon and his troops and was used as a, like a bastion against the Russian army. And it was kind of like a launching pad uh, for heading off to, um, uh, to Moscow where he was unsuccessful. Uh, but this video, I'm going to show you the fortress, tell you a bit about the history and show you another amazing sight to see in Poland. Dzień dobry. Welcome to a Brit in Poland. This channel has a number of missions. The main one, to create a video for every place on this list. Though I could use your help. The help could be in a number of forms. You could like my video. You could subscribe to my channel. You could follow me on Facebook or Instagram, or you could donate to my Patronite account. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoy the video. So sending out another thank you to Ricky and Wojciech, my two subscribers, as it were. Uh, they are helping to fund my lovely adventures. So the Magdalen Fortress is located very close to Warsaw, as you can see here. In fact, it's about 50 kilometers away. So, as I said in the introduction, a pretty easy train journey. Now, Magdalen itself is perhaps more famous these days uh, for the airport. This is where you can get the cheaper Ryanair flights uh, into Warsaw currently. So, we got off at the station and we had a bit of a hike uh, to actually get uh, to the fortress. So, along the way, you see various kind of ruins... Oh, and do watch out for white bears along this journey. Maybe you'll spot them. There were some murals dedicated to 1920, which was the, uh, the Battle of Warsaw, I believe, where Warsaw basically held off the, uh, the Russian forces after the Second World War, when there was, let's say, a bit of a war. And you see a few elements which I didn't know how many were subscribed to the fortress but these bits certainly are and they give you let's say a little bit of a tease uh, because this whole area was a massive defensive fortification ultimately so as you're walking along you have a few let's say uh, cutoffs um, through the the kind of the pathways for you to have a look and see some of these uh, fortress walls uh, what's remaining as well of course as you go through a kind of sculpture park um, you pass a, a war museum so you kind of get an idea that this area was used uh, quite extensively for defense and there was a lot of fighting uh, that took place here the actual hike I don't know takes you about an hour or so uh, the fortress itself when you get there from a distance you're like okay you see a couple of hills i i climbed one hill which nobody else did um, which gives you a, a little bit of a panorama but it's still a tease at this point but you actually have like a proper viewing platform which you get a slightly better view of the old fortress walls and the here is the bear again Actually, the small bears are a kind of, they're named after like, uh, is it Baska Mamanska, which was a, a white bear adopted and tamed by Polish soldiers while in Russia. And this bear would walk with the army. And it's a kind of little urban game to try and find as many bears as you can. So feel free to see, to say how many you see in the video. Now the fortress itself, well, this area has actually been strategic for almost a thousand years. Um, there were some initial constructions in the Pierce Dynasty around the 11th century. And 
It was actually the Swedes who built the first fortress here uh, between 1656 and 1660, uh, which they used during the deluge of Poland. And they pretty much did this to fortify the river, uh, which is the river Nalev and uh, the Vistula, and to launch their assault against Warsaw. In 1791, the Russians who were occupying Poland at the time did plan to build a fortress in the area, though this idea was kind of abandoned after the French created the Duchy of Warsaw, basically taking a large chunk of Poland away from the Russians. And Napoleon decided he was going to build a fort himself. So originally, uh, the Napoleonic fort, uh, which was kind of conceived in about uh, 1806, uh, was to be a supply depot and a granary uh, for the French forces. Construction started in 1807, though it was a bit slow and the first walls weren't really ready until 1809. Uh, the core of the, the Polish army under Napoleon was stationed here after the Battle of Raschen, uh, which was against the invading forces of Austria. In 1810, Napoleon changed the concept of the fort and it was now to be a pivotal defence in his line of fortifications, and it was expanded with an outer rim of defences. Uh, Jean Mallet de Granville, who was a famous French engineer, and he was made an honorary pole, um, was put in charge of the project in 1811, and some 19,000 people were involved in the construction of the forts at this point, rising to above 20,000 at its peak. However, on the, uh, the 5th of February, 1813, the fortress was sieged by 36,000 Russian troops and it was defended for about 11 months, finally falling on the, uh, the 1st of December, 1813. And it was the last of the French forts in a long line of fortifications uh, to capitulate to the Russians. In 1815, the fort found itself as part of the Congress of Poland, which was kind of a state of the Russian Empire with a fair bit of autonomy. However, during the November uprising, uh, the Poles basically prepared to, to use this fort as a defense against the Russian forces, though it was never attacked. It surrendered on October 31st, 1831, and in 1834, it was renamed the Novojovidach, I don't speak Russian, uh, by Nicholas I, Tsar of Russia. And during 1832 and 1841, it underwent a huge expansion. And it was manned by a garrison who were put in place to prevent another Polish uprising and defend Russia's western line. Uh, we are currently standing on the Red Tower, also known as the Tartar Tower where basically the Russian Muslim soldiers lived. Um, the Russians were a bit worried about some kind of, let's say, uh, dispute between the different religions. So the Tatars were given their own tower. And this particular one served as a communication point and a viewpoint. And it had a telegraph installed, which was connected to St. Petersburg. Standing at 45 meters high, you can actually see Warsaw uh, from the observation terrace on a nice clear day. As you can see, you can make out some of the skyscrapers in the distance right now. Um, across the water, you would have seen uh, a certain building which looks pretty dramatic. It's it, Basically, it was an old granary building. And it was also a defensive structure as well, um, which was made in 1844, by the way. Uh, between 1883 and 1888, uh, the fort was further upgraded as a defense against Germany and the Triple Alliance, i.e. Germany, the Austro-Hungarian Empire and Italy, um, ahead of, let's say, World War I. And the fortress was integrated into the larger defense network that was surrounding the area. In 1912, uh, there were pl plans to modernize against new weapons put into place, and this modernization went into effect until 1915, right up until the war. However, the fort was captured in a matter of days by the German army, who 
consequently took about 1,600 guns and close to a million shells from the Russians after this. After World War I, uh, the fort was further modernized with bunkers, anti-air, tank, missiles, and served as a military barracks. And in 1939, at the start of the war, the fort would actually be one of the last Polish military units to fall after the Battle of Maudlin, with 24,000 Polish troops surrendering. And it is said that during this time, the anti-aircraft guns shot down more German Luftwaffe planes than any other uh, during the September campaign. After the war, it was uh, turned into a bit of an airfield, and these days it's mainly a tourist attraction. You cannot access everything, uh, but you can access a couple of the towers and get into the courtyard a little bit. And it proves a lovely day out from Warsaw, which is pretty easy to do. Uh, it was ultimately sold to private investors in 2013, and part of the contract was they have to maintain two of the towers, the red tower, as you saw, and also the white tower, or the Czerwone and Biała towers. So you can see that the fort has quite a rich history. It served quite an important part of uh, the defense of this region. And given that you have Warsaw very much to the south, it's quite an important region in Poland. Uh, there is a museum, which you're seeing images of now, with some pretty cool multimedia exhibits. Some of it was in English, but to be honest, most of it was only in Polish, especially when you're watching some of the videos. But it was a nice little addition. It wasn't too expensive uh, to go there either. And it was a, yeah, I'd say about a 20, 30 minute walk through uh, to just get an extra taste of Polish history. So ultimately we had to go back, but I hope you enjoyed this little glimpse of uh, Morton Fortress. It was a lovely place to visit. Dozobachenia. <laughs>